the seniors against the very top of the, the ladder, so it's a good test for him. First time since 2005 that Iran have had, had some finalists in the Asian Championships. They've got another one to come later on. San Bartor had a real interesting one in his semi-final, got a win by split decision against Asian youth and, and youth Olympic champion Abdomalik Kalakov of Uzbekistan. He's a bit of a rising star, so he managed to see him off. Always got someone snapping at your heels, haven't you? And it was the same on the other side of the draw for Shakbash as, as well. It was a split decision when he overcame uh, Singh. So they've both had hard fights en route to this final, and sometimes that's exactly the test that you need. Sometimes it's just the test that you need. Sometimes it can leave its mark and just drain the, the energy uh, levels as well. And I wanted to, to get through as comfortably as you can in these big events. So looking forward to, to seeing who's got most left or what's going to be the telling factor in this one. Sembatar would be favourite coming into it on the, the strength of his medal hall and his experience in this event. And of course in the, the Worlds a couple of years ago, as well that, that was down at 57 kilograms wasn't it he's moved up for this and of course he fought at the olympic games as well sembatar he was un <laughs> unlucky to bump into a guy called shakur stevenson andy on that occasion yeah that's not who you want is it not not at any stage of the competition but particularly not not early on interestingly for sembatar as well he he went up quite early in the um, Asian Oceanian qualifier for, for Tokyo at 57 kgs, but has been allotted a world allocation place. So he has actually he has actually made it through the European qualifier, finishes off next week, just in case people are wondering what's going on with that. The Americas one isn't going to take place. Quality bit of boxing there from Sam Batar as he closed the gap. He started with a left hook to the body, then he weaved towards his right and he brought that left hand upstairs to the head he landed with both shots and you can see much more compact compared to Shakbash and just his pedigree and experience telling through the, the first part of this one it was lovely he just seems to creep into space doesn't he without seemingly doing all that much that's all to do with the front foot just stealing the space he's almost tempting Shaq Bash to, to lead off and then there'll be either a roll of the shoulders slight dip of the hips and then very sharp one two as well he's looking good in the first round and that was better wasn't it from Shaq Bash picked that uh, Almost right up a cup gun hook nicely. Maybe just starting to settle down. He's got that height advantage, Shaq Bash. He's got the reach advantage that comes with it too, but he doesn't really jab, does he? We've got two southpaws here and he looks for that, that southpaw left. He looks to use that lead right hand more to kind of step in and, and throw that screw shot almost uppercut at times, but just there where they've got that gap between them. He can just throw that jab. There's that right that he slings up from the waist, but if he can get on that jab, he needs to get on the jab, doesn't he? Nearly picked that, didn't he? Off the back foot, that uh, right hook come uppercut. There's a beautiful shot. He's picked it a couple of times, but I think on balance, Sembatar looked at quality in that round. And as uh, Andy says, it, it's a, a difficulty sometimes for the taller fighter to know exactly how to go about it. Remember when Joshua fought Andy Ruiz for the first time and you, you could really see through the first two or three rounds, up until the, the, the knockdowns in that third round, you could really see Joshua struggling to know how to approach it with the jab. And he was crouching down. He was basically negating all of his height advantages to try and find a lower angle to land the jab. And he really struggled with it through the first couple of rounds, uh, Joshua. And you, you can just see the, the difficulties that Shaq Bash is having. I think now he's decided he's going to box off the back foot. And we'll see. It looks that way. It looks that way. And you're right, it's, it's easy to, to sit here and say, you just need to get on the jab, get on the jab, because he's taller and he's got that, that greater reach. But that's obviously not how he looks to use that, that lead hand, as, as we said. He, he likes to try and shovel it up from the waist, get some power on it, just, just short there as he did. What he does look, though, is very confident uh, in his own abilities. And he's, he's not 
He doesn't look nervous, he doesn't look hassled at all by the, the pedigree, the experience, the, the talent, the reputation of the man in front of him. The danger with this style is there is an economy of effort and that there is, there is little in terms of how many punches are, are coming back at, at uh, Sen Batar. So it, it is easy right now the way he's going about it, as technical and as relaxed as he looked. There is an economy of output and there's just the possibility he will be outworked. That's exactly it. There's that lead right hand there, though, managed to, to land it. He, he is being, or he was in that first round at least anyway, he was out hustled, wasn't he? Because his opponent was just that bit busier. And maybe there's a sense with him that he wants to land the perfect shot. He wants everything that he throws to to find the target. He's let his hands go a little bit more in this second round. He's looking to try and get on the jab. I think the, the corner probably would have said that to him to at least use it somewhat. He's got a future though, isn't he? You can see there's plenty to work with. I think the, the Iranian staff will, will, will know they've got a bit of a talent here in the, the shape of Ashak Bash. And, you know, like Sabit, the, the, the young 18-year-old who fought in the first as well, future looking bright for them if they can just sort of work on a few things. And very early stages still in this one, halfway through the second. Now he's qualified for Tokyo as well, actually, Ashak Bash. You want to box off uh, to finish fifth. Six places at 57 kilos for the Asian Confederation for the Olympic Games. So that was some pressure heaped on his shoulders. He wouldn't have known at the time quite how much because he wouldn't have had any idea about the fact that the, the next qualifier, that final world qualifier that was planned, was going to was going to disappear. A little bit of a clash of heads on the inside there. Yeah, so it sort of became sudden death, didn't it, very, very quickly for so many uh, boxers with a, a one eye on the Olympics. That's a bit better from Shaq Bash. I actually getting off first, maybe leading off with the shots now. He's getting a bit of rhythm in his work, and this could be an interesting development. If he, he can stop Sambatar in his, his tracks or make him think about what's coming instead, that could just be an interesting change in the play. And you can just see that that last 30 seconds is it a great example of how boxing can work. As suddenly, Sembatar is thinking a little more, and eh? the things aren't flowing for him. And he's got to worry about what's coming his way. So that's a, that's interesting. That was good. Whether it was enough to win him the round, that's something that the judges have to decide. But maybe just a development with the final round approaching. Indeed, that final. A few seconds, he did look uh, a touch more circumspect. There's Senbata. So this one could be set up nicely for the third and final round. Five scoring judges at ringside using the 10-point must. They can score at 10-9, 10-8, 10-7. It's all about interpreting dominance. A standing count or a, a knockdown won't necessarily result in a 10-8 in a round win. That's the difference between the scoring system in, in Aiba Boxing and and pro boxing, you see quite a lot of 10-8s. You see the odd 10-7, not too, not too many. We also saw the heads coming close together in that round as well. It wasn't anyone's fault, just the, they both reached with punches, they both missed, and the smaller man, his momentum took him forward. You saw the reaction from Shaq Bash as we head into this third and final round. So how much of that to confidence that maybe he gained at the end is, is going to feed into this final three minutes? Ho at the start of the round there, Senbata just came wading forward and Shaq Bash with a good start to the round, did get caught with the right hand there, but the opening exchanges there, the, the fighter in blue had the better of those. That's a really sharp, short left hand though from Senbata there as well, wasn't there, in that exchange. I mean, he, he needs to get close, really. He was able to dictate things and the distance was being controlled by him markedly through the first round. It's, it's definitely changed now. Iranian team were out training with the Uzbek team for uh, about a month. I was hearing a, a training camp before these before these championships. That's a huge part of, of life as a top international amateur getting into training camp with other top nations. 
spars that are like fights, gathering great experience. Good left hand there from Sen Barter. Yeah, it was, wasn't he? When he when he manages to, to close the gap, he does look good. Not quite being able to do it as effectively since the first round. A bit better though, I, I think, in this one. I think with any young boxer, kind of finding your own style has is, is, is got to be part of it. And I think Jack Baxter, is, uh, he's, he, he's definitely, I think, one of those boxers that you could see moulding his, his style, finding what works for him and then building on it. He's got, uh, he's got a basic template, I, I think, there that, that could be pretty effective. Zambato is looking for that left hand, isn't he? It's almost as if everything else is, is, is just to set up that big left hand. Closing stages, and it's Zambato who's been the more proactive of these two in the in the third round so far. I'm just thinking that might that might just be tipping this in his favour slightly. Shaq Bash has maybe waited a little bit too long to try and get his punches off, particularly in this final minute, probably needed to show a bit more urgency. Finishing well there, though. Yes, as he did at the end of the previous round. Whether any of it was ever enough throughout the, the balance of the, the nine minutes, you'd, you'd probably wonder. But uh, plenty to build on, plenty to work on, I think, there for Shaq Bash. And it is the respectful boxing bow from San Bato. He looks pretty relaxed that it might be back to back Mongolian golds. Defending champion, a number one seed. A lot of pressure that comes with that, of course. Up against someone in Shaq Bax who's made some great strides in, in recent times, already had a very successful year. Ladies and gentlemen. The winner by anonymous decision in the red corner representing Mongolia. Mongolian gold once again. Kaku was splendid in the previous contest. And now it is Erdenbat Sanbata who has added that. And in the end, it was pretty comfortable. Three rounds.